If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, my name's T1 Glistener Elf, and here I have my Painter Grindstone Stacks deck. This is Prize Stacks, my own little format that I invented. It is as ridiculous as it looks. If you want to have friends, don't play this deck. The fact that it starts off, I start off my deck tech here with reaching over all the cards with Smokestack should really tell you something. This is a four mana artifact. During your upkeep, you may put a soot counter on Smokestack, so shout outs to soot counters. During each player's upkeep, that player sacks a permanent for each soot counter on it, so that does mean that you'll have to sack one first. Now, because you're playing the smokestack and you're minusing one, you're sacking a permanent first, you think this is really negative on you. But we have ways to recur our permanents and thus out attrition them. Either recur or just have so many that we beat them out. So starting off we have Oh my goodness, I'm in a terrible spot right here. <laughs> you can't see, but the tripod is uh is keeping me held back a little bit. Let me try the other hand after this, instead of using my left. Uh, first we have Crucible of Worlds, which because it's redundant with itself, you usually don't want to have four in the main board, but they're that important to what we're trying to do. Basically, we can play land cards from our grave, as though they were in our hand. And so, Smokestack put a counter sack of land, get it back with Crucible of Worlds, and then next turn, so on and so forth. We can just therefore stay even on permanence, while our opponent, if they don't draw land, will go down one, etc, etc. And so, yeah, Crucible Smokestack. Yeah, we're, uh, we're really playing some nice magic here. For the actual win con, we have Painter Grindstone. So Painter's Servant is the first one. When it comes into play, choose a color. All cards that aren't in play, spell or yeah, aren't in play, spells and permanents, so basically everything, are the chosen color in addition to their other colors. So name a color, don't name blue just in case they have force of will, but otherwise, just I don't know, whatever card whatever color seems least relevant. Now, that in and of itself, of course, doesn't do anything except give you a 1-3 chump blocker. Uh, but we have Grindstone. And Grindstone has a 4 of, uh, 1 mana, but you have to pay 3 and tap it to get its ability. Put the top 2 cards of target player's library into their grave. If they share at least 1 color, repeat. Well, now they're all the same color, so of course they'll share a color. It mills their entire deck out. And that's how this deck wins. You mill them out using Painter Grindstone. <laughs> so, we have a few more... <laughs> See, again, if you don't want friends, play this deck. We have a few more ways to make our opponent absolutely miserable. One is by making all of our spells cost one more with good old Sphere of Resistance. So combo decks, no, they, they don't get to have fun. Uh, mini decks, actually, don't get to have fun. We're making their spells cost more, and then in a similar vein to, say, a Death and Taxes deck, we're about to strip their lands away with cards like Strip Mine, Wasteland, and again, the aforementioned Crucible and Smokestack combo. Now, in case they do have some creatures, we want to stop them. I'm running four in Snaring Bridge, and I've very strongly considered running three in Snaring Bridge and a Static Orb. Uh, but this one basically will dump our hand, thanks to our mana ramp and they won't be able to attack until they deal with the ensnaring bridge through something like a maelstrom pulse all right and even if they do deal with that again we have we have shenanigans uh, so the first little shenanigan that we have actually works to break smokestack as well this is hangerback walker and hangerback walker is a little bit silly in this deck so it comes in uh, cost is XX, enters with X plus one plus one counters, and then when it dies, you put X one one flyers into play. You've seen this in standard probably. Well, with Smokestack, we sack the first one and we get a number of counters uh, equal to that number of. We get a number of Thopters equal to the number of counters on it. And that puts us so far ahead for Smokestack that we should have them for a while. Even if not, they're still good chump blockers. Uh, so that's one way that we can try to break the symmetry of it, by making a ton of Thopters to get in their way. Another is we can play Solemn Simulacrum. So this card is 4 mana. When it enters and when it leaves, it has a trigger. When it enters, you get to search for a basic land and put it in tap. So already, it's replaced itself 
and we have another permanent we can sac to smokestack. But if we sac this instead, we get to draw a card, because it's when it uh, is put into the grave from play, draw a card. Okay, that's awesome. That gives us yet another card. And so between four Hangerback Walkers and four Sol Solemn Simulacrum, they can theoretically, once we've gotten to so many permanents, Smokestack has done so much work, eventually we could beat down with them, but usually they're there to provide chump blockers and to, again, break the symmetry of Smokestack. Now, we, next we have a Sensei's Divining Top. And it's only one of because it only can be a one of. This helps to smooth out our draws a little bit, make us more consistent, so that we find what we need when we need it. Early in the game, that is. Alright. Next we have our single copy of Lotus Petal, because it helps to ramp us into all of our other pieces. Alright. And because we have so many artifacts, we run four copies of Mox Opal. You can tell the deck is trying to ramp really quickly, and that makes sense when you consider what all we have here. A turn one Sphere of Resistance is backbreaking for so many decks. Uh, we have, of course, Mana Crypt, Soul Ring, and Mana Vault. Our little mana ramp package in artifact heavy decks like this, sort of an auto. Those are auto includes. Can't really get away with not having them. All right. Now, for our lands, we have four Ancient Tomb, which is the best land in the deck, the, the majority of the time. Makes two mana for you at the low, low cost of two damage. That's it. That's all. Two damage for two life. Or, wow, two damage for two life. <laughs> there we go. One equals one. Two damage for two mana is absolutely worth it when the first card you're casting is a Sphere of Resistance or with two Ancient Tombs, you can actually get Painter Grindstone on the second turn. Turn one, cast Painter. Turn two, Grindstone and activate. Now, in order to protect ourselves, we're actually running some deserts. These don't have to be desert. They could be, for instance, Vesuva to come in as more Ancient Tombs or more land destruction uh, cards like Dust Bowl or Tech Edge. But we're running desert because it does deal one damage, which does matter in a few cases. Helps to deal with, say, an Avon Mindset, anything with one toughness, or stack them up to deal with Containment Priest, Insectile Aberration, etc. All right. Now that we have those, strip mine. Good old strip mine. Because we have Crucible of Worlds, and eventually, if you get to a point where a Crucible strip mine just takes all their lands away, what are they supposed to do? What are they even supposed to do? Alright. And related to that, because we can only run one strip mine, we run four wastelands. Same thing, except it only hits non base. Only hits non basics. That tells you how broken strip mine is. Utterly, that's how. Now, I'm actually going to skip over Core Haven just to show you that I have five basic planes, and they're not just in here for Solemn Simulacrum. That is the main reason. They allow us to actually activate the ability of Core Haven. And Core Haven, Maze of Iths, sort of, it fogs one creature. So it can either make colorless mana or one in white, prevent all combat damage that would be dealt by target attacking creature. Okay, that's pretty awesome. That means that if they're happening, if they're going big and putting it all into one creature, that's fine. We can just prevent that damage. Now that we have our main board out of the way, you can see how oppressive this might be. Very early on in the game, set up a lock, and then don't let them play magic. This is going to be uh, interactive, I suppose, but the least fun magic deck to play against. And it just gets better, because the first three cards in the sideboard, the first six instances, I should say. We start off with four Armageddon. So if we didn't have enough land destruction, we we add a little bit more. Uh, but it, that's a Billy Mays commercial. But wait, there's more. We're also running a one of balance, which is utterly broken by the fact that we're making a lot of our mana off of mana rocks, not lands. And so, yes, Lotus Petal, four Mox Opals, three more mana rocks, a top to help us find more after this, yet balance is busted. And also, we dump our hand quickly enough, we can strip our opponent of cards. <laughs> Next, because that's not enough, we run a single copy of Cataclysm. Now this one actually needs to be played very carefully, because it 
Okay, so each player chooses from the permanents they control an artifact, creature, enchantment, and land, and sacks the rest. We have to be careful because we have so many artifacts, that would really hurt us. Uh, however, what we're supposed to do when playing this is we use it as a wrath against other artifact-heavy decks, like robots, like mud, like the mirror, so that we can play this and then follow it up by playing more artifacts from our hand. And that, that's supposed to break it. And plus, we may not have many lands anyway because we can, you know, shoot others down with Strip Mine and Wasteland. Alright, now for fighting combo decks, we have Chalice of the Void. Seems good. Turn one, Chalice on one. Alright, next we have Meek Stone. Again, for dealing with aggro, but this one is only one mana, so it's something that we can definitely do very early in the game. They'll get to attack, they just won't get to untap. I'm looking at you, Delver of Secrets. We have our Wraths, our Artifact Wraths, in two Oblivion Stones. So let me move my finger off of it so you could actually read. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is not easy. Okay, you could read. It's Oblivion Stone. You can see the rest. Puts Fake Counters on permanents, and then it can sack to destroy non-land permanents that don't have Fake Counters. So we can, if we need to, just on the next turn, blow up the field, or if we have time to set up, we can save some of our own permanents and break the symmetry of it, though that's quite a, a bit of mana. Next we have two copies of Tangle Wire. Yes, this vintage card gets to make its way in. Fading 4. Yes, fading. So, comes into play with four fade counters at the beginning of your upkeep, remove a counter. Alright, so at the beginning of each player's upkeep, each player, that player taps an untapped artifact, creature, or land they control for each fade counter. That breaks the symmetry automatically, actually, because you'll notice fading happens on our upkeep. So after we play it, the opponent taps four, then we tap three. Then they tap three, then we tap two. So they'll have the worst one to deal with on each of those, if that makes any sense. Now, again, there are plenty of decks that fold to a Trinisphere, if it's played on turn one, as you can imagine. Any deck that wants to be playing a Dark Ritual against us, not so much. Alright, now, I'm supposed to have two Static Orbs in the sideboard. I don't have Static Orbs, so we run <laughs> Weenies, actually, Hate Bears. We run Avon Mind Sensor to go fight decks that do a lot of searching. Just anything with a fetch land, really, but particularly Tutor Heavy decks that are running Beseech the Queen or Diabolic Intent. And then Containment Priest, because it fights Reanimator, it fights Through the Breach, any other way to cheat a card into play. All right. Otherwise, though, those would be Static Orbs, because you'll notice we don't actually tap a lot of permanent. Static Orb is a three-mana artifact. Each player only gets to untap two permanents during their untap. Well, lo and behold, that hurts creature-heavy decks a lot more than it does us. We don't have that many. Yes, we have Hangerback Walker that could do it every turn, but we'd be bringing it in against decks that we know would be hurt by it much more than us. And that is your, what, what are we calling this, um, with this Stacks deck? Other than just Stacks, I'm sure we could come up with something a little bit more creative. Painter Grindstone Stacks sounds a little too long. Painter Stacks, there we go, Grindstone Stacks. Alright, take care Magic Community. If you have any suggestions, feel more than free to let me know, and I will see you later. Bye-bye!